Hello and welcome to the second video on our new range of weathering powders from Humbrol. This is the same Snatch Land Rover from Airfix that I was building in the last video, but it's had much more work done to it since then. Previously I showed you some simple and quick techniques to weather the interior of a vehicle such as this, and now I'm going to show you how easy it was to achieve these effects on the underside of the model. The rust on the exhaust, the dried dust around the various areas of the chassis, and the dried mud on the underside of the wheel arches were all very simple to achieve and can be used on a variety of different models. This is a mixture of dark earth, sand and white coloured weathering powders which form a nice sand tone that's suitable for my model. As usual I'm using acetate sheet as a palette and I'm going to add some of our enamel based varnish Humbrol matte coat to the palette and then dilute that with Humbrol enamel thinners to form quite a runny mixture. You'll see here that if I hold it up it starts to run, that's the desired consistency. This diluted matte coat is then brushed into the wheel arch in quite a heavy but even coat. I'm then going to start adding the mixture of weathering powders to the wet varnish using quite a large brush and a short stabbing motion to mix it all together on the model. Because this is a mixture of three different coloured weathering powders that I'm applying, small areas of different tones and colours will pop up. By repeatedly stippling with the brush, I am going to mix the three different colours together to give it a unified appearance, however these small variations will add to the depth and realism of the finished effect, so I'm going to allow some of them to stay. If there are any areas which really stand out and I want to remove them, I could add a little bit more of the matte coat to blend everything together, or I could just keep working the semi-dry mixture with the brush until everything mixes together. While the brush is still loaded with residue, you could spread some around a little bit, as I'm doing here on the chassis, to extend the effect further. I can now use a clean dry brush to feather the edges of that additional mixture and blend it all together. When that mixture dries you'll notice that Humbrol Mad Coat has dried to a completely flat clear finish and the weathering powders under the wheel arches are fixed down perfectly. This is particularly handy for those of you who use your models for wargaming as these effects are now anchored into place and won't be rubbed away over time. Next up I'm going to move on to the rest of the chassis and add that streaking dried rust effect that you see here. This part of the model is painted with matte Humbrol acrylic black. I'm going to mix up the same weathering powder mixture as I used earlier, only this time it's diluted with Humbrol decal fix and a little bit of water. By using the decal fix as the dilutant for this solution, I can reactivate the weathering powder mixture with water later on and manipulate the weathering powders again. This gives me greater control over the final look of this effect. I'm just going to add enough weathering powder mixture to cover the whole front face of the chassis that faces outwards on the vehicle for now. In a little while I'll show you how to use this effect in layers, but for now I'm just going to let this coat dry and then go back in with a brush moistened with water and then add vertical streaking. By reactivating the weathering powder mixture using the wet brush in this fashion, I'm allowing some of the black paint from the chassis underneath to show through. This replicates the dust being washed away either by water that's splashed onto the chassis or by condensation that's formed and run down. Now I'm going to layer the effect to add more depth. I'm mixing up some more of that runny matte coat solution I showed you earlier, using Humbrol enamel thinners again as the dilutant. When I've got the right consistency, I can simply tap this gently onto the chassis and allow it to soak through. What I don't want to do is reactivate the weathering powder mixture again and ruin all that streaking that I've created. To this end, I'm going to very gently just tap the brush on the surface of the model and let the matte finish soak up the varnish. When that's dry, I can now add another layer of weathering powder solution diluted with decal fix. 
The matte coat acts as a barrier between the layers and stops this mixture from reactivating the weathering powders in the layer below. Because of this, I'm now adding to the effect rather than jumbling all the colours together. By doing this I can add depth and realism to the finish and I can add as many layers as I like until the desired effect is achieved. By layering in this way you can also add some specific areas of interest. Here I'm picking out some parts of the chassis where the water may have run a bit heavier with a thicker layer of weathering powders. It's time for some rust on the exhaust but first I'm going to need to base coat it. I'm adding a variety of different grey shades mixed up from Humbrol Acrylic so it has an uneven finish before I even start weathering. I'm going to take some Humbrol Matte Coat and add that to the acetate palette. This is going to be my fixer for this effect and I'm going to dilute it with enamel thinners as usual. It's time for my weathering powder selection now and obviously I'm going to be using rust and the iron oxide shades. What I don't want to do is create one unified colour. What I'm going to be doing is adding spots of several different colours, so I'm going to keep the weathering powders in separate piles. Because rust and iron oxide are quite bright colours, I'm also going to add some flat earth just in case I need to tone it down a little bit. The matte coat mixture gets applied to the first part of the exhaust that I'm going to weather. In this case it's the middle box as it's the largest area for me to show you the technique. With the matte coat in place, I'm using the tip of a fine brush to gently add some very small dots of the weathering powder. I'm going to need to zoom in in a minute to show you because I really am using a very small quantity of the rust coloured powders. They're very strong colours and I'm using a small quantity because when they hit that wet matte coat they'll spread out and you can see here just how much I've covered in those few tiny applications. The colours are very bright so I'm going to apply some of the flat earth now to tone it all down and it really does bring in an extra depth and it makes it look much more realistic. I'm going to work in a random fashion around the exhaust adding little bits of rust here and there never going too strong in one place but rather just building up the effect gradually and I think it's starting to look quite realistic already. And when that matte coat dries that effect looks absolutely great and not only that but you can safely handle it as it's fixed to the model. The three simple techniques covered in this video all come together to create the realistic weathered finish under this Land Rover. In the next videos that we're releasing, we're going to cover the techniques for some much more extreme effects with these Humbrol weathering powders. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again.